Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Big Gauchos, the stock investing show that's completely out of pocket to help put money in your pocket. I'm Austin, back with the boys. What up, Big Gauchos? Big Gaucho team money. Hey, guys. David's back again, and hope everyone's having a great Friday. And uh, we have a special guest today, uh, one of my coworkers and dear friend, uh, Kane, a.k.a. Kenya Combo. What up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kane's got a special... I guess you could call it a plan or a strategy that he's been working on with vaccines. And it's almost like he's day trading the vaccine companies in a way. So um, if you could tell us a little bit about what you do, I think I'm definitely curious to hear. So give yeah, the listeners yeah. at home what you're doing. Absolutely. So my slide, obviously, I don't have anything too special. But no um, <laughs> so I really like everyone. I didn't really see um the virus and outbreak and all that really coming but uh i was slowly getting into just being more consistent on just following the markets and stuff like that and so around december i believe sometime in there um i really kind of got interested in um day trading and swing trading and then just investing in general and I'd always been into it, kind of like I mentioned earlier to you guys, uh, was interested yeah. in high school yeah. and all that stuff. And then this past year, I really tried to just like lock in and kind of just find some stuff that I could have some success with and whatnot. And this is kind of the golden egg, I guess, was these all these pharmaceutical companies and stuff trying to find a vaccine for the virus and whatnot. And so um, really what actually kind of got me interested wasn't necessarily the virus but just the volatility that comes with kind of more penny stocks and stuff like that and so I just saw the spikes and stuff that would come with the pharmaceutical companies that are trying to find the vaccine and stuff so I just really tried to focus in on finding some strategies and some ways to play that volatility so that's kind of how okay. it started so you exclusively do uh companies trying to find vaccines that's your that's your portfolio basically not no not necessarily um really right now and actually um honestly the actual companies that are finding trying to just find a vaccine right now aren't the ones that i'm necessarily playing i'm kind of looking all over the markets right now not okay. just the pharmaceuticals and stuff but it's just one that there's always one that you can find that has some pumpers behind it and stuff so that's kind mm -hmm. of it's just something that you can kind of play every day so that's what really got me interested in it and so um biofarm catalyst is kind of where i started uh they have a calendar with all the pharmaceutical companies and then it also they make it really simple and easy to read and understand and then it um, if you go on there, you actually can see like what phases um, the companies are in with their trials and testing and stuff. Okay. And so I actually found out, I was watching a video on YouTube and uh, I found out that there is, I don't know if it's an exact number or anything, but any company or not any company, but uh, a company that gets to the third phase of their trial, they have an 80% chance that they're most likely going to be completely FDA approved and stuff. So that, wow. that, yeah. So that kind of okay. alone drew me a lot more into like playing these pharmaceuticals that are trying to find a vaccine. And stuff. So vaccine cold war hacks right there for you. <laughs> major I guess, major yeah. hack. <laughs> so I have to ask, are there any companies that are phase three right now that you kind of saw yeah. coming because of that website? not necessarily to be honest not there wasn't any that i was like i think this guy's got it or whoever okay. but i believe uh gilead g i l d i believe they're in their third phase right now and Damn. they're one of the leaders and stuff and i think if i have when i was looking kind of back at some of my watch lists they were having like 20 30 percent days and stuff and you can the craziest part about all of it is you can find some that'll literally spike hundred 
150% in one day. And then, wow. you know, being in college and stuff, it's not like we have unlimited money. So like the thought of, Oh, I could put down $300 and it might go up a hundred something percent. Like the returns on that was just, it was kind of a no brainer to at least try it and just see, I guess. So. Right. No, I totally get that. Yeah. I got a pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. are you, are you buying shares of these companies or are you buying calls? If they're I'm mainly buying, I'm, I'm mainly buying shares um, just with a cash account and stuff. I'm not using any margin or anything like that. Okay. But, um, and a lot of these are penny stocks. So like, I don't really, I've never, to be honest, I've never done any options on penny stocks necessarily. I stick the options that I mainly stick to are larger cap stocks. Like, um, ones that I've been kind of looking at uh, a lot is AMD. They've been having a lot of, a lot of volatility up and down days and stuff. So when I'm doing options, I'm kind of looking more like large cap stocks compared to just penny stocks. Cause I'm okay. still like, I'm still learning options. I'm still learning like really how to play them in the most effective ways. So, right. Yeah. They're super hard to predict because we have so many up and down days all the time. So I can understand that. That's that's a really interesting strategy, and it seems like Hello? that. Oh yeah, you're, right. you're good. I'm breaking up a little, so if I'm not talking, it's just my internet. Oh no worries, um, but yeah, the, I think you're good. Yeah, the website's a really interesting tool that you know you can leverage it in that way. So it, it seems like you kind of have the the secret golden egg for buying vaccine stocks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it isn't for me something that I've kind of learned just over the last few weeks is more so like pre night planning. So like building my watch list and like doing scans and stuff on my, on my brokerage, I use thinkorswim. Um, if you can, I'm still learning it and kind of testing it, but like, if you can like scan them and find them before they're even hitting the news or before the pumpers get any, action on it you can really find huge returns and that's where you can find a stock before it goes up 30 to 50 percent and whatnot dang yeah that's it's all about being ahead of the game that's Absolutely. what we like that's what we like big gains baby <laughs> big gains i guess as the um residential aspiring medical professional of the team um <laughs> the thing i'm most interested in um ironically is the clinical trials itself. So I was wondering, does that website include the um, um, results of the clinical trials or also like papers published by the companies or is that just um, the trials that these companies are in? I don't really necessarily look into like the papers and like the trials themselves. I'm just more focused on like what phase they're in and then the news that correlates to that. So like, I don't know anything about medical or biology or anything like that so like i'm not even necessarily interested in like how it reacted or whatever the like results were as much as just like where they're at in their testing trials and then how the news is responding to that because a lot with these penny stocks like i'd say over half half of like their fluctuations come from the news and people trying to short the stocks and whatnot so it's not even necessarily from and i'm not saying that like that can't be something you could add to your strategy and whatnot. But for me personally, like I'm not going to try to go and learn something and have no idea like what they're talking about or anything like that. So it's probably good. Yeah. I was going to say, it's probably good. You have a really quick turnaround on the stocks too, just in case. Cause you know, like you were saying, some companies don't always make it. So yeah, absolutely. And that's another thing like, that you really have to remember is like there's most likely we're probably not going to obviously see anything anytime soon because obviously it's all in the testing phases and stuff but like as far as just penny stocks as a whole or just smaller companies and stuff nine out of ten times they're not going to end up making it they're not going to probably be these huge large cap stocks that like most people know about so one thing that a lot of people who really try to get into it is they fall in love with one of these like small companies and then they catch the news about it. So they might catch a stock that's already 
30% up on the day because they finally got the news or someone in a group chat or something said something or mentioned the stock. Right. And so then you, a lot of times, and I've fallen victim to it. I know um, earlier in the year, I actually got drawn in on Neo. It's a Chinese Tesla. So they make electric cars and whatnot, but I caught wind. I was just like everyone else. I caught wind that the stock was going crazy and stuff. So I bought it. I bought it at its peak, which was like oh. 520 something. And I was, I still didn't really know what I was doing or anything. I still don't know what I'm doing completely yet, but Neither do um, I. <laughs> yeah. Have fun with it. And so, uh, absolutely. And so, I bought it when it was like 520 something and I had, the, and then it just ended up tanking. They were trying to raise cash and stuff. And so then I end up having a bunch of shares of a company that I had no idea if they were even going to like be around in another couple months and stuff. And so that's a big thing that like, if anyone's who, anyone who's looking into like these smaller companies, don't fall in love with them by any means on like what they're trying to do and stuff because a majority of the time they're probably not going to end up lasting so yeah. quick disclaimer we love disclaimers yeah <laughs> that's right that's that's interesting i didn't know the failure rate was 90 i i yeah, figured and I, mean, I figured just I based know. on hype yeah. it would be higher you know alone you know mm -hmm. i yeah i don't know i can't like a lot of these numbers aren't exact either uh, another oh no i get it but yeah just a majority <laughs> of the time these huge stocks mm -hmm. that go up tons of percent in a day they're probably not going to be around in another year or two you're probably right especially because the virus will i mean not the virus the vaccine will probably take um what, what were we talking about it'll probably take like a year to even start yeah. you know being mass produced so who knows and pretty much only one company can get to it first yeah. see your gains and get out asap yep absolutely just take Kane, yeah on. i think everyone here has been victim of chasing the green at least once yeah, oh, yeah. i know i have i have definitely yes. at least once <laughs> i know we we've been we pretty much do it after every episode we just figure out um what sleeper stocks we want to buy and then we just chase it <laughs> luck and coffee <laughs> yeah luck and coffee oh my goodness uh, that was a rough one I know, but oh, yeah, hey, everybody has done that. <laughs> I'm still gonna, I'm gonna rebuy. I promise, I'm gonna rebuy and hold. I still that's have my, it. That's my hundred yard hail mary. We'll see how it goes. If they get bought out, you already know. <laughs> I got it. I got in at two eighteen, but yeah, I still have it. But anyway, yeah, Kane's got the gains. You already know. So that's a really interesting strategy. I'm gonna have to go look at it after the show. That's pretty cool. Thanks for sharing all that. <laughs> yeah no problem um, yeah for it's my sure. two cents <laughs> all right two cents uh penny stock joke <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, i need a nap um okay we got so in other um, news we have um yeah you know, some news <laughs> with china some uh speaking Trump of luck and coffee in china <laughs> <laughs> so trump has proposed some you know, some pretty harsh sanctions on China today. We haven't really been friendly with them and they haven't really been friendly with us for, you know, the past couple of years. Um, yes, sir. And also we pulled out of funding the World Health Organization um, just because of things going on with the coronavirus in China, how it started. Um, so what do you guys think about that? <laughs> with the well, I, I was reading that China had control Sorry, of the, I, don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys are talking to me i'm breaking up like crazy oh uh, you're all right yeah we're just we're just talking about the uh world health organization okay um okay. yeah i think i think that them pulling out i know i read that it was because uh china was mainly controlling it mm -hmm. is that true yeah that that was um one of the re uh, one of uh, Trump's reasons, I guess, was that he thought that they were favoring China and they weren't doing their due dil due diligence when coronavirus first um, came out in China and helping mm. to uh, prevent the spread of it. Yeah, and they're saying that they uh, aren't really doing their part either to help out, like Dave was saying. Um, but what's interesting is they're saying that. They're going to revoke all these privileges for Hong Kong, like customs and travel privilege status, 
and uh, no special policy or incentives. So that was interesting because most of their exports are just from uh, China and I guess only about 5 billion come out of Hong Kong itself. So they're saying that even though Trump is imposing these policies, it's not going to affect the trade too much because I guess Hong Kong isn't as significant in this case. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Isn't Hong Kong also not really part of China? It's kind of its own thing. Yeah, kind of. Well, it's it's a Chinese special administrative region. So it's like a region of China, I guess. I just looked it up. Kind of has its own laws and regulations, right? Yeah, kind of like that. So I, what I'm thinking is it's kind of like a state, you know, like it's like Arizona within the United States, basically. Okay, that makes sense. So I think even though we still have the tariffs on mainland China, it's going to hurt Hong Kong trying to come in and snap up any production for sure. Yeah, um, I mean, honestly, uh, this one's interesting, to be honest. I don't know really how I feel about us pulling out of the World Health Organization. Um, Why is that? It seems kind of like from just what you guys are saying, because I haven't really read into it. We're saying that Trump was saying that the World Health Organization didn't really do his due diligence in warning us about the coronavirus. But then when you look back a couple months and like some of the comments made with some like higher up officials saying that the, the virus was just like a flu or a fever and that it really has no significance to it. Because I remember we hearing it about it like in January, January and February, everybody thought it was kind of like a joke. And then all of a sudden it kind of hit and like it kind of backfired and so I'm just kind of like, it's kind of like a double-edged sword from what I'm seeing. That's that's really true. I guess the main thing that uh, Trump's concerned about and all the U.S. officials is that China just has the majority control right now. And they were exposed for falsifying numbers of COVID cases that they had. Oh, okay. That makes sense. So I I think that's why they're mistrustful of them. But, you know, I mean, we saw that come out today, and I know three of us thought it was going to be a dip big time. And oh, yeah. turns out stocks always go up. <laughs> I hate it. Money machine go brrr. <laughs> Machines yeah. going off. Yeah, so I don't, I don't really know what to think about that anymore, but it's going to be interesting to see if the, the Hong Kong sanctions are permanent now. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Bro, you know what else? We thought GE was recovering super fast. And turns out they're burning billions of dollars a month. Uh, I guess they've already gone through about three and a half to four and a half billion just because of COVID. And it says they're cutting 13,000 jobs. (laughs) Wow. But pretty sure their stock went up today. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. It's it's down 3%, but they're still... They're still up from a month ago. <laughs> they're up like they're up like twenty <laughs> percent. Well, I probably be they are cutting jobs. I guess in people's eyes or invest as they're cutting expenses, so that's why it's staying higher than what is expected. But if you're burning through four point five billion dollars, you are in some pretty serious financial <laughs> troubles. Yeah, yeah I, wonder. I wonder what how much the uh, they had in um how much they had before the crash that's what um, i'm wondering too in their cash reserves yeah because if you know if they had 20 million or 20 billion then it's not that big of a deal i guess but if they only had about 5 billion in reserves <clears throat> and they burnt through almost all of it then that's pretty troublesome because you know it's still going to be a long recovery and if they burn through almost all of their um cash reserves and they're not going to be able to weather the storm and they might be in some trouble pretty soon i mean so i'm assuming that they're probably close to their cash reserves because they're cutting thirteen thousand jobs they're just kind of like showing like hey we can't really afford you guys so <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. but yeah i just i mean i don't know the numbers so you could be right they could have a lot more and they just want to save it who knows i just i just looked it up actually their cash on hand for uh the quarter ending march 31st is 89.585 billion damn so they, they got a ways to go. <laughs> yeah. Wow. They're I mean, it doesn't old. surprise me that they're burning through crash because who buys appliances when they can't even pay their own mortgage, honestly? That's, 
That's so true. Hey, that that might be a good sleeper because they're trading for about six bucks. But you know, if you look at the numbers, they actually got plenty of cash to get through this. Hmm. Yeah, they do. And before the crash, they were trading at around thirteen dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, not that it's a good thing. I mean, it's kind of a dumpster fire. But you know, in the long term, it might be all right. People aren't going to just stop buying appliances. Yeah, that's true. They're saying that uh, part of their business is getting hurt because aviation's down, and I'm not exactly sure what they make for airplanes, but that was part of it, so nobody's buying planes right now either. Probably parts or some electrical stuff, you know? Yeah, I'm assuming. Component. Probably have like Wash- a dishwasher on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just, just to wash some dishes, you know? They got, a double, <laughs> they got a double deck refrigerator in the back with a deep deep freezer and all that. Yeah. <laughs> For those overnight plane travels across the Atlantic Ocean. That'd be so dope. That'd be so yeah. dope to have one. <laughs> um, yeah, it definitely could be a stock to look into for a long term. Yeah, I was going to say, I might buy some tomorrow if Tyler does. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, we'll, yeah. we'll talk about that after the show, Austin. We still got to yeah. figure out luck and coffee. If, we if, all know what happens when you two buy stocks <laughs> at the same time. It's usually not a good combination. Hey, well, I, held the, I held on to looking. I'm I'm gonna rebuy looking, so don't worry, Austin. I'm right there with you. All right, facts. If Tyler and Kane buy GE with me tomorrow, then <laughs> then I'll I'll hold it for five years. I'll just be a bag holder. Oh my. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys. What are, are uh, what do you guys? What do you guys kind of? What do you guys look at? Like as far as like long term, what is like. What do you kind of hold in for the long term if you guys do hold long term? Uh, we look into like reputable companies. We see what they, their average trading is. And um, mm-hmm. based off of the Corona dip, we also kind of look into that, seeing how much like percentage they lost from what they originally were trading at. Yeah, and yeah. Then, and then from there, we kind of decide what, are, what we decide to hold or not. Like one of the really good stocks that David brought up was a PAA, which was Plains All American. It was a pipe, it was an oil pipeline trans transportation company. It was trading at like almost twenty dollars mm-hmm. at one point, and the crash happened. It was at around five bucks, and we knew that the oil crisis was happening, so mm-hmm. that also played a really big factor on the dip. So we bought into that, and a couple months later, we're already at double. So we just kind of like play the market and see what news is out there. And then we kind of like based off what could we do for a long-term hold. Yep. What is your guy? What are you guys' thoughts on the whole oil thing or whatever happened? Couple oh, weeks well, back. What do you yeah, guys think we, about that? We, Tyler and I actually bought into some more oil a couple of weeks ago. We bought USO and, you know, it was all right. But um, it's starting to rebound a little bit right now. But um, I know we were a couple of weeks ago, we were recommending the tanker companies like Nordic American and Scorpio tankers. Mm-hmm. So we were definitely big into that and I can see the appreciation in it, but it, it might take a while for sure. But yeah. kind of like Tyler said, that's pretty much what we're, what we're doing right now is just reputable companies that had a big enough dip to make it, you know, profitable once it mm-hmm. rebounds in the next six months to a year. So that's yeah. that's pretty much our basic criteria for it. Yeah. And then we'll we'll also yeah. look at like IPOs and stuff like that sometimes. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I really like oil. I think it's a really good investment because why it crashed so much was there was a huge supply being produced by um um Russia and Saudi Arabia and yep. also a little bit of us. I mean not nearly as much as them, but we were producing quite a bit too. And, um, with the coronavirus, all, you know, like planes, uh, they weren't going anywhere. Ships weren't going anywhere. Um, people weren't driving as much as, uh, as much as they used to. So there was a huge increase in supply and a huge decrease in demand. Mm-hmm. So there was having a lot of troubles storing the oil, um, which is why the prices went negative because they couldn't store anymore. So they're just trying to get rid of it. Um, but you know, of course we're opening up now a little bit. So, um, you know, oil production or oil consumption is going to be increased a lot. And once we get back to normal, um, I expect, you know, oil to be used like crazy again, um, mm-hmm. which is because 
you know, we're, we're not really quite there to alternative fuel sources, which, um, you know, I think eventually we will get to, but, um, right now we're nowhere near close, uh, you know, um, solar power and, uh, wind power and even, um, hydropower is, it, it's, it's not quite there for us yet. Um, I know in, I think Germany, they use a lot of solar power. Um, in France, they use a lot of nuclear power, but primarily here we use, um, oil. We use a little bit of nuclear, but I think it's only about 20%. So we're not going to switch, you know, overnight because mm -hmm. nuclear power plants take a long time to build and um, they're quite expensive to build too. Yeah, it's it's definitely not mass produced enough at all and on a big enough scale for the country. So that's why we started buying into it. And hey. uh, most yeah. of that. So you're saying to hold USO? <laughs> oh, we cracked him. <laughs> We cracked him. Is that what I'm hearing? No, I, I don't think I'm going to hold USO because I. But think, it's oil. <laughs> I'm hold, I'm yeah. holding it. I don't care. But I think I think the the philosophy of that ETF is terrible. I don't think it's good at all. It's really it's really stupid. It's just okay. You're investing in the rate of rate of change. It's just I don't think it's a good idea. Okay, I'll give go I'll give up. Dave I'll give Dave some credit. They did cause the oil crash. USO single handedly caused that crash because. They don't own any physical oil or have storage. They're just betting on futures. So, Kane, just a quick backstory. Um, <laughs> we were trying to figure out uh, how to buy like real oil barrel, like a com like a comparison <laughs> or equal yep. to it. And uh, the closest thing we could find was USO and uh, actual buying literal barrels of oil and storing it. And uh, obviously, we 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 called a couple companies. We said we have my backyard. We can put some oil in there <laughs> they were like nah we can't do that it's not a what's it called the word epa approved it's not yeah, epa it's not. approved to dump it in tyler's swimming pool yeah so we couldn't do that so <laughs> on the we were looking around and we googled it actually to see any other equivalents and uh, uso was one of them that came up so we looked into it and it said that it was supposed to be the equivalent to one barrel of oil and then one day we came to the 52 week low i was like okay this is a no-brainer it's a, the news came out the day when it first went negative. So we're like, we definitely have to buy this. We bought into it at the 52 week low next day, mm -hmm. went down another 35, 40%. So uh, a lot of ground has to be made up before we get our yeah. money back. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's true. We got, we do have a long way to go and you know, we, we have a part about that a little later in the show. There might be a new opportunity with Canada and their oil. Cause they had a yeah. big glut too in Alberta and the prairie regions. So we'll, so, we'll yeah. see what happens. <laughs> but first up, real quick, we got uh, we got Pete's Coffee. Their IPO is starting to come out. They raised two and a half billion dollars in ten days for their IPO. They just rushed it super fast. Who who are they? I've never even heard of them, bro. They if it wasn't for Pete's, they wouldn't have Starbucks because Starbucks started buying their beans from Pete's. Um, Whoa. So, yeah, they're big time. And I didn't know this, but they're also, that. yeah, I, I know, but they're also in Europe and, uh, and Asia. I didn't find that out until today either, as well as so the, we the European Starbucks. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. Essentially. I, yeah. I like Pete's. They, they have one, um, in the hospital that my lab is in. So whenever I want coffee, I, I go to Pete's and it's pretty good coffee, honestly. Um, However, it is really dark. Um, they, they, they brew really heavy um, dark coffee. So um, I know I don't put sugar and cream in my coffee, um, but yeah. I kind of have to put a little bit of cream just because it's, it's really pretty bitter for me. Wow. But it's good. I like it a lot. So what are we thinking, boys? Is this a, a buy-in or a wait and uh, see what happens type deal? Because we've seen what happened to Luck and Coffee. That was a Chinese That's Starbucks. That's true. And uh, Tim Horan's, the Canadian Starbucks, uh, we haven't really looked into finding a, a stock for them yet. I think you mentioned something, Austin, but I haven't had a chance to look into it. Yeah, it's, so now, uh, it's, it's trading under QSR for anyone that's listening. It's a a uh, parent company that owns Burger King and Tim Hortons and Popeyes, it's restaurant brands international. So like Tyler said, if they make a buyout offer for Tim Hortons to absorb luck in, that's, that's another one that could benefit. 
So yeah. So what are we thinking on a European Starbucks? Dude, I'm um, I might put in a few a few bucks in that and GE for sure. <laughs> so do we know how much they're gonna be uh, selling their IPO at? Hasn't come out yet that I could find. I mean, yeah, but, I haven't found it either. I heard they raised more than it was expected, though. Okay. So, so definitely some potential. I think so. Mm-hmm. If you buy well in, blind. I buy in too, Austi. Yeah, that's the rule. <laughs> <laughs> so you're buying GE with me tomorrow? Or uh, uh, Monday? A, yeah. If you put in an offer, I'll do it. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll do a trade order. I'll make Kane do it too. <laughs> I'll buy a little GE. You'll buy some GE with us? Okay, dope. Yeah, I know. I'll throw it down. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I potential. mean, I, I might buy Pete's. I, I don't really like buying IPOs because I feel like a lot of IPOs are overpriced. So, um, but I'll, I'll see what what they come out and see what their um, market cap is altogether. And then use that to compare it to other companies um, within the field. Um, So, I I mean, I'll I'll just see. I I really don't like buying IPOs personally. Yeah. You got to do your homework. I'm right. I'm right there with you, David. Like I'm not a big IPO guy. Um, I mean, if you kind of even just look at like Uber and um, Lyft, Lyft and yeah, like insane IPOs and stuff. And now, you're kind of seeing like the real company and kind of how it's actually ran and stuff like that. So like, if we're talking as far as like a buy and hold, I'm not a huge IPO guy either, but I think if you want to get a nice day trade in or something, IPOs and the volatility that come with it is always a good option. If you're looking for something to trade. Yeah. You could have a big swing on that Pete's when it opens that first day. Mm, yeah, yeah, because they definitely usually go up a lot from their initial IPO, and then mm-hmm. from there, you never know what's going to happen. That's true. I haven't, I haven't been a fan of looking at IPOs since Dave and I got fucked on the Levi's IPO when it. I came mean, out. y'all didn't do bad on it. Y'all were pretty much even on it. I still have it. I don't, I don't even know what it's at. It's just depressing to look at. That's not my check. It was like fourteen dollars. Oh yeah, see, I bought it like twenty three. I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I almost to bought too. I almost bought. Yeah. <laughs> hey, i didn't we, have we money t- in my bank account like so when i got my robin hood account i didn't i never i never had a chance to put money in it and then the ipo happened yeah. and i was like dang i missed it it was a blessing in disguise no you I didn't, didn't miss, it. I didn't <laughs> miss it i was like dang you guys were talking about how great levi's was as a company and it's a great company they i love levi's still they're I'm a great just, company like overall like their books are good they make quality product they're everywhere just, no, there's no reason why they get, went down. I'm just biased because I wear Levi's. Yeah, Corona. That because they had to close all their stores. But I just wear Levi's every day, so I'm biased. Yeah. So I mean, I'm sure they'll come back eventually. But it's definitely it was definitely a good buy because it stayed where it was. It's just coronavirus happened and took a took a big dive for all the companies. So you know, not not your guys' fault. So true. You know what else is a really good buy right now? What's that? Uh, some oil straight out of Canada, our favorite place. <laughs> Under ten dollars a barrel, and the analysts are saying their three to five year growth is looking very promising. So it seems like they're kind of lagging behind what was happening in the U.S. Um, and it makes sense because I know there's a big, um, there's a big glut of oil that was in uh, like Alberta and the Prairie provinces. What, what is it trading under? CAO. Something like that. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, so, oh. C-O-C-S-O. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. If you know, I, I, I would I would consider going. We can go rent out a U-Haul and travel up to Alberta and then bring some oil back across the border. Yeah, we can yeah. put it in my backyard. <laughs> yeah, maybe the regulations are different. We can drive Canadian oil down here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll rent out a whole... Um, uh, storage uh, facility. And you got room at, at your place for some oil too? <laughs> yeah. I could probably make some in my room or something. Maybe my closet. I don't know. Uh, one barrel in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll just make- sit on it. That'll be my chair. Yeah. it's That, that chair is making you money. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Anything that makes me money. That's right. <laughs> well... I know what else will make us some money if we talk about the biggest winners and the biggest losers. Get the people some good advice because we're usually right lately. We've had a good track record. That's right. Hit that intro.
So I found a really weird one for us today. Uh, Telecom Argentina is up 10.55%. So like TV? Hmm. Yeah, it's it's like it's like phone and TV cable communications for just most of Argentina. So okay. maybe you could get yourself a little monopoly. I was about to say I don't know if it's a monopoly or not, but maybe if you start buying up a bunch of shares of it, you could do pretty well. Yeah, yeah I mean they are up a lot. Yeah, because that is we were, interesting. I know we were talking about those foreign markets doing really well. Like in Brazil. Brazil. So maybe, yeah, Brazil. <laughs> let's go. So maybe maybe Argentina's starting to catch up a little bit. Although this one's traded here, so we should be all right. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got Marvel Technologies. I didn't know what they were until I looked it up. But I'm kind of up. interested in this. Uh... Yeah. Okay, you can go ahead. Oh, yeah. No, I, I was, I'm breaking up, but I was, I'm kind of curious what the uh, Wolverine. What do we got here? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wolver- <laughs> Wolverine well, level. He's, a- he's out building five G towers and semiconductors, so that's that's why he's trending today. Um, I don't really know much yep, about five G. That's 5G. a new wave, I guess. Yeah, it's. I know it's a new wave, but you know, I I think I'd have to do some more research before I were to buy into something like that. Hey, I'll tell you about semiconductors. Basically, those are um, basically uh, computer chips, like power chips is in a sense, that uh, go into computers or like big tech things. And uh, they are very uh, high demand in this uh, area of business because there's one uh, in Phoenix called On Semiconductor. And that's all they do. They sell about, I think, over 100 million or a billion chips a year. So definitely... Uh, a good company so if marvel technologies is doing the same thing and creating 5g's on top of it they definitely have a pretty good platform to expand yeah they they definitely do i was just about to talk about on but you know oh, you they could, yeah you know, they could definitely be an industry leader this marvel maybe you know who knows you yeah and honestly i was a, I, I applied for an internship at on semi yeah they're huge in the arizona hey. where we're at yeah, so I'm eventually going to try again because I, I came to like the late rounds of selections, but I just was just short. So I'm going to try again. I have an inside source and a couple of professors. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> there you go. We got we got bad news with the wheat stocks again today. And I think that's only bad for me because I, I bought Aurora, but canopy growth is down 20.03%. And they're pretty much the biggest one that's publicly traded right now um i'm i'm not i'm not gonna do it just based on personal experience and trauma <laughs> <laughs> so it's just not worth it to me <laughs> um yeah the cannabis um uh, sector has not been promising these past couple of months or even like, was it like almost a year now yeah it's, it's been, been like, a, kind of straight down yeah and the 12 to 1 reverse split on aurora that's just a sign of the times for everything else for everyone else with what's ahead yeah so i mean from experience i think it's just because there's i think it's just because that there's a really huge um number of companies you know in the market and you know maybe the demand's not quite there yet um so there probably needs to be some condensation in the market and you know we'll we'll see what happens but i think for sure there's going to be some mergers going on at least in the future definitely too many companies you're right dave that's right, because at the core of it is just agriculture. Think about it. <laughs> yeah, and then, as of right now, unless you want to hold for the very, very, very long time, cannabis companies <laughs> are not to buy. No, I would. We would not recommend at all. Yes, I I, I, I agree with that. I, I don't know if I'd recommend this next one either. It's a little risky. We got Nordstrom, um, pretty. I'd say pretty highish end clothing store some bougie stuff yeah 10.98 percent which you know i get it i get it no one's gonna be spending hundred dollars on comedy garçon or whatever when we're in a recession (laughs) (laughs) well and also they're a big box retailer in a sense they're in the mall yeah like in fashion square they got like a four-story building in there that's right oh yeah it's huge they got the valet (laughs) (laughs) 
I mean, yeah. I can understand why they're hurting because not people, A, people aren't really going to shop there right now because of the whole situation with the virus. And B, they are high end stuff and it is causing a lot of people to be more uh, conservative with their money to kind of save and see what happens in the future. I think I think it's interesting when you think about it, like their leases are probably crazy expensive. For a oh, four story yeah. building in Scottsdale, I mean, they they have to be bleeding cash just in their retail leases for all of their stores. It's easily a mill or two a month. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not gonna be cheap. And you know, no one's buying right now. So if they do it's online. Yeah. Yeah, so. kind of stemming kind of stemming even off that not really stock related in a sense but just i think through all of this stuff you're kind of seeing the real true power of like e-commerce and the advantages that they have or that that brings to the table for a company i think i mean all these small businesses are transitioning to e-commerce even restaurants for that matter just being able to order online pick up take out all that stuff Mm -hmm. and i mean it's showing like Amazon's not going anywhere anytime soon. And I just, I, for me personally, I don't see the, the long-term potential of still having a retail store. Not necessarily that retail is bad because I support retail and buying local and all those things, but just the convenience that e-commerce brings for just the consumer and stuff. I don't think that I just don't see any reason why anyone would really want to even waste the time to go to a store when really like you go to a store, to be honest, you go to a store for the experience usually, or in my opinion, that's why a lot of people usually originally would go to stores is to experience like buying local or buying in the store. Right. But now it's just, it's so convenient to buy right off your phone in a matter of two clicks that to me, it seems like a no brainer. Every Company should really be pushing e-commerce as Completely kind of a agree. selling platform. Yeah, it's it's totally the future, and I think it's interesting you brought that up because we were definitely talking about how e-commerce was getting big a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, but a lot of the sleeper stocks that are making big gains are brick and mortar. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. I, yeah. I also don't forget with e-commerce, what's one of the biggest uh, sleeper stocks we talked about that basically makes e-commerce stores? Shopify. Yeah. Shopify. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's too yeah. easy. I've yeah, done. also, if anybody out there, I have a Shopify store called Creators <laughs> Customs. Check us out. We make custom shoes. <laughs> nice nice ad. Nice ad. Give yeah, it the plug. Like Give plug. it the plug. Yeah, plug it, you know. There you go. Got hey, an ad for you guys. That's right. We got sleeper <laughs> stocks real quick for you guys, too. We got Lowe's, Waste Management, and Tyson Foods, our favorite chicken nuggies. Chicken nuggies. <laughs> chicken nuggie meow meow. Mm. <laughs> Lowe's. Lowe's, I get it because everyone's doing a bunch of projects indoors right now. And also new construction is kind of the wave as far as real estate goes. Um, you can see the same thing with waste management. They do a lot of residential too. Or What do you boys think about these three? Uh, definitely could see Lowe's increasing because people need hardware and tools. And when you get bored at home, not really doing much, you try to build something. That's what I usually do be creative you know so i can see that and then waste management i don't know just such an iconic name like they they take my trash out and they'll always have a (laughs) special place in my heart because they do that so i'm assuming (laughs) i'm assuming that they'll be they'll be okay in the long run too because we never run out of trash they're a big household name exactly and Tyson Foods is just chicken nuggets. If Beyond Meat can make some chicken nuggies, you already know. Yeah, Tyson, I mean, they had that whole COVID scandal and a lot of contamination. So, I, I mean, this sound, it sounds bad to say that, but, you know, they they are down right now. So they're a pretty solid American company if you're thinking of purchasing in the food industry. Yeah. Yes, sir. We also we also got a really solid podcast company that might pay if we want to buy some Tyson Foods as our next sponsor. <laughs> you guys ever heard of them? No, no, you I don't haven't. Think so. Who are they? Uh, uh, I think.
think it's Anchor. I think that's how you say it. Anchor. Uh, anchor. Oh, Anchor. 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 Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Hit that. Hit that ad real quick for us. Thank you, Anchor. You know we love you, as always. So, with that said, what are you boys thinking for tomorrow's Monday's market predictions? Uh, Kane, just a real quick rundown. We try to call the uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average for the next trading day, and we just we just kind of keep track. We have a little competition type thing, so whoever's closest wins. Uh, yeah, okay, so. sorry. I keep breaking up too, so like I'm not as this quiet as I normally would be about this stuff. Just keep break. I have horrible connection right now. Oh, but. dude, I I do too. You're totally good. We're all um, breaking up. Yeah, we are. Um, yeah. Dave, are you still good? Uh, I think so right now. So okay. I think. Why, why don't you I, go first? Yeah, yeah. So I think for me, and I've been pretty bullish recently and you already know nothing's gonna stop the bowl so we're coming back and we're gonna say we're gonna have a green day on monday and we're gonna rise 200 points to end at 25 600 okay all right i can respect that i'm also in the same boat as dave i'm usually a bear about everything but j pal is showing that the money printer does not stop for Burr. Yeah, Burr. It does not stop for absolutely any reason. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna say a nice twenty five five, you know, repeating even numbers. So nice round number. Um I'm gonna say twenty five four hundred. No, twenty five three fifty. Okay. Kane, you got any uh thoughts on that? I think he's I think he's out. Okay. Uh, I'm breaking up a little. I'm kind of right there with you guys. I'm in the 25 five. Um, it seems like anytime you think something's going to happen, the opposite usually ends up happening. And I've kind of been bearish <laughs> the last three months. And so have I. <laughs> that's, I guess, obviously, look where we're at. So that kind of explains it all. That's so true. Well, on that note, we're going to have to see what happens on Monday. But thanks for listening, everyone. We hope you enjoyed the show. Leave us a video message on anchor.fm slash gauchos or biggauchos.com if you want to send in an investing tip. We might play it on the show. Tyler, disclaimer. Quick disclaimer, guys, even though I'm breaking up. Uh, we are not licensed brokers. Everything said is our opinions and that we are not responsible for any loss gains or any kind but we are directly responsible for all gains and uh we hope you guys uh invest we hope you guys uh, make some money please like and subscribe and follow all the social medias leave us a message comments uh text me email me uh, fax me all of it let us know yeah we got our fax uh, line open Instagram is at Big Gauchos, Twitter at Big Gauchos. And hey, um, Tyler may be breaking up on his connection, but we're not going to break tradition, so that's why we're still doing it for you. Uh, so that's a good <laughs> night from Arizona. We hope you made some money today. Yeah, and also a quick uh, thank you, Kane, for uh, being our guest for this week. Uh, it was yes, a pleasure sir. having you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys for having me. I had a good time. Definitely Hopefully changing I can come our back show. on. Yeah, it's very interesting we, hearing different opinions on things. So yeah, you know, yeah. You, we'd love to have you back. So I think I'm definitely going to go look into that website when we get off. <laughs> also, um, Kane will eventually be a a guest on uh, Tyler's weekly challenge. So look out for that video in the future. That's true. Yeah. All right, night, boys.